appreciate everybody joining us this morning. Today, uh, we're going to ask for the community's assistance in a homicide that happened this year on August 31st, where Christian Estes was gunned down. Standing next to me is his mother, Latoya Woodward, as well as Lieutenant Brian Crum, who's going to give some details on the case. This time, I will turn it over to Lieutenant Crum. Lieutenant. Good morning. As uh, Captain Koch said, we're here to discuss uh, Chris Nessie's murder, and we need the community's help to solve this. Um, so we're here along with his family uh, in support of him to try to get someone to come forward with the information that we need in order to solve this case. Um, as background, in the early morning hours of August 31st, uh, there was a college party. Uh, we're a, a party in the university area with uh, kids of college age. Um, they, it was a normal evening uh, until uh, at some point an argument broke out. And following that argument, um, over seemingly minor things, uh, somebody went and got a gun. Uh, they came back and opened fire on attendees of the party. And during that shooting, Christian was struck along with three other people. Um, the three other people had very serious injuries, uh, and unfortunately, Christian passed away. Um, during the course of our investigation, we've learned that there was at least 60 people there when the shooting occurred. Um, and to date, uh, in the five weeks that have passed over that time, we've only had a few people come forward to share uh, with us what they heard. Uh, we understand that a lot of times it can be difficult um, to come forward initially um, to discuss what you saw, uh, but this is a case where without um, the community's help, we're not going to be able to solve it. I want to be clear that Christian, uh, along with these three other people, were innocent victims. Uh, they didn't do anything to deserve what happened, and that's why we need your help. Uh, as always, uh, we can ask the community to come forward. They can call Crime Stoppers at 704-334-1600 or the TIPS line at 704-432-TIPS. I'm going to turn it over to Christian's mom, and she can tell us a little bit about Christian. Um, hello, my name is Latoya Woodward. I'm the mother of Christian Estes. Um, but first, I, before I get started, I kind of want to just thank God for giving me the strength and the courage to just come up here and just speak on my son's behalf. Um, Christian was 19 when he passed. Um, he had a 10-month-old daughter, um, Paisley, who he loved dearly. Um, this loss has been a tragic for me and my family. Um, something that you can never think of what happened um, to your child. Um, not just Christian, but also the three other victims that were involved in this tragic incident. So I just want to just come forward with the public to just come out and just, you know, say something. If you was there, um, if you know anybody that was there, or just people just talking about it, just to pe please to come forward and just um, give our family some form of closure um, for Christian. I pray on a daily basis that God gives me peace um, and strength to carry on day by day, but it's a hard task. It's a hard task for me. It's a hard task for his um, three other siblings that he has that lives with me, and he also has two other siblings um, on his father's side. And Christian was just the type of person where he was always a motivator. He was always trying to figure out the next best way to have a happier life. He lived his life day by day of this is going to be my best life as if this is going to be my last life. And I want his memory and I want his legacy to continue to, you know, to live on um, through him, through me, um, through his child, um, through his child, and just understand that this is a tragedy. It's not just because it's my child. It's because of this is something that it can be your child. It can be your cousin, nephew, grandson. It can be anybody. So I just want us to come together as a community to make sure that we get this case solved. So I just want to say again, we can't do this without the community's help. Uh, we need the community and those people that were at the party, anyone who has information about this case, to come forward and call the, those numbers that we provided or call Homicide Unit Detective directly. Uh, we cannot do this without the community. That's how we solve our cases. Many times people don't realize little bits of information they have may seem insignificant, and those small pieces of information come together to paint the full picture to let us find justice for our victims. And this was a party, I would imagine there were a lot of witnesses. Have you run into a situation where people haven't been cooperative there, or they just didn't see something because of, it was dark, and then they, can you explain some of the challenges there? Sure. I don't think this is a matter of people not being cooperative. Uh, when the shots were fired, obviously everyone scattered, which is a completely normal reaction. 
However, in the weeks that have passed, a few people have come forward, and I think some of that may be that people just don't think the information they have is important. They may not realize that someone they saw or something they heard is critical for us, uh, but when viewed in the larger context, is really important. But we've had everyone who we have talked to has wanted to help us out. So that's, that's what we just say, no matter what you may have seen, if you were there, we need you to come forward. And maybe for Christian's mother, um, what would your message be to, you know, someone knows who, who did this, what would your message be to the people who are surrounding or close to that person right now? Um, what I would like to say is, I forgive you. Um, I forgive the person that has done this. And I feel like there needs to be accountability of your actions. Um, if you're a man enough to shoot a gun, you should be man enough to come forward um, in this situation because I want everybody to know that um, the streets do not care about you. You know, the only person that really cares about you is God, and that's based on my faith. And so I'm just, you know, asking everybody just to come forward, even if it's small information, even if it's something little that you might have heard or people just, you know, just talking about, just come forward with it um, because that little detail can be so important in this case. Ma'am, I see there's a picture of your son right yes. there. Can you just talk to us a little bit about, you know, when was this taken? What was he doing? Um, well, actually, this was the day um, of his graduation. Um, that was something that he was so proud of because he had went through so much, and he was like, Mom, that was my milestone. Like, him graduating from high school, because he went to high school um, in Durham, because that's where my family is from. And so he took this picture uh, on top of the rooftop, and he loved cars. Um, he always had a nice car, and that's probably because of me. <laughs> um, but he was very fashion king um, type of person. And he was always, you know, outgoing, outspoken, um, just wanted the best for himself and the best for his family, the best for his friends, and he was just that type of person. Um, how are his siblings dealing with him? Um, well, they're taking it really hard. Um, him and my oldest daughter, which is 13, um, she's taking it really bad. Um, and I have a five and a 12 year old also. So Christian was the oldest um, out of his siblings. And so it's, it's definitely a day to day struggle, you know, trying to get them up, trying to get them motivated, trying to let them see that there's still goodness in this world. Because it's kind of sad when your kids can go anywhere to actually enjoy themselves, um, to have to live in fear almost if I'm going to be the next victim to something tragic like this. Um, well, Christian, he loved cars, um, so his motivation was to sell cars. Uh, he was actually in the process of trying to get his own building um, to get a car lot. Um, I had just helped him maybe two weeks before he had passed to fill out his CDL um, certificate to try to get his CDLs for school, and he also had started school to do HVAC. So every day he would call me with something new, some innovative that he wanted to try to do for himself because he was determined he was going to be a millionaire before he turned 21. Um, <laughs> so that was something that he always was enthused. He was always motivated to do something to better himself. And he always wanted even his friends to be on that level of, you know, being an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, so that was him. That was Christian. What do you want people to remember about him? Um, his loyalty. Because um, Christian was the type of person where he always stood by the people that he cared about. And he always looked out for them, even with my grandmother, which is his great-grandmother that helped me raise him. Like, he would always check on her because she's a diabetic, and he would call, like, Grandmother, did you check your sugar? Did you eat today? Do you need help cutting the grass? Like, he was just that type of person that always wanted to help somebody. And even through all the obstacles that he did go through in his life, he always made time for other people. All right. Thank you, Ms. Woodward. As Lieutenant Crumb said, anybody with any information, we ask them to call Crime Stoppers, 704-334-1600. Uh, if you provide information that would lead to an arrest, you can uh, be awarded up to $5,000. And from Ms. Woodward's um, graciousness and uh, understanding and the fact that she has forgiven the person, she doesn't even know who, it, who did it, but she has already forgiven them. We just need the public's assistance. So we ask anybody with information to please call Crime Stoppers 704-334-1600, or you can call and speak directly to a homicide detective, 704-432-TIPS. Thank you very much. Appreciate